Hi, welcome back to ingvid.com. I'm Adam, nice to see you again. Today's lesson is for IELTS and TOEFL students. And so because these students need a little bit extra practice in listening to more natural speed English, I will speak a little bit faster. If you're a beginner English learner, watch anyway. It's still good practice, but don't worry if I'm speaking a little bit too fast. So more specifically, I'm going to be looking at the writing task two, the essay of the IELTS and or TOEFL. They're very similar. That's why I'm doing them together. There's not big differences, but I will point them out. And what I'm doing is I'm concentrating on the introduction today. The introduction paragraph. I'm not showing you the whole essay. I'm just showing you the introduction. Now you're wondering why. It's just the introduction. It's a short one, right? No. This is probably the most important paragraph in your whole essay. This is where you basically make or break your score. Okay? Why? Because here is where the reader understands what you're about to do. This is where the grader, the person who's giving you your score, understands if you understood the question, understands if you know what you're talking about, and understands if you knew how to plan well. Okay? Very, very important, the first paragraph, the introduction. So what are you going to do? Of course, you're going to plan first. You're not going to start writing. Do not write one word of your essay until you have your plan ready. Once you have your plan ready, then your, your essay is done. You just have to basically translate this plan into sentences. You're basically going for three to five sentences. Less than three, you, didn't, you missed something, you didn't do enough. More than five, you're going for words, you don't have time, don't worry about it. Three to five, get down what you need to get down, get into your bodies where you're going to be writing the most, okay? There are four questions you want to answer in the introduction. You will already have these answers once you've planned properly, okay? What do you want to answer? What is the topic? What is the question? What is your opinion and what are your reasons? These are the four things that must be included in the introduction. Now, a lot of you think, well, topic and question is the same thing, right? But no, they're not. And this is where a lot of people lose points because they don't realize that these are two different things. The topic is the general idea of what the question is about. The question is specifically, what are you asked to do? Now, the most common type of question you will see on both the IELTS and the TOEFL is a question that asks you to choose between two things. They want you to choose one and argue why that one is better than the other one, or why that one is so good. Now, what I'm going to show you today will mostly apply to these types of questions, but if you have a question that asks you to compare and contrast two things, keep in mind, even if they ask you to compare two things, they're still going to ask you to lean towards one of them, to choose one as better than the other, in which case you're still going to need to give your opinion, okay? What is the topic? You're going to keep this very, very general. All you're doing is giving the idea of what this essay is about. So I, I know all of you have probably practiced this question. Is it better to live in the countryside or in the city? Explain your reasons, giving examples, etc. Your first sentence, very, very general. What is the topic of this question? City life? Country life? No. The topic is where to live. So your first sentence introduction introduces the, the idea of living choosing a place to live. The question is then more specific, so your, your sentence narrows a little bit, becomes a little bit more focused. The question is, is it better in the country or the city? Okay? Then you have to give your opinion. You must say, I believe, I think, in my opinion. You don't have to use these words. There's other ways to say your opinion, but if you're not sure of those, put one of those, make it very, very clear what you're saying. This is your thesis. This is a very specific sentence. After reading this sentence, I, the grader, must understand which side you've chosen and what you're going to argue. And then you see the last sentence gets a little bit more general. Why? Because you're giving your reasons. You're not giving me details. You're giving me general reasons of why you have this opinion. Okay? So four sentences, or you can squeeze them. You can squeeze, for example, this one and this one. You can squeeze this one and this one and make three sentences. Or you can add extra information. You want to make this one two sentences? Go for it. Make it five. 
don't go more than five. More than five means you're, you've lost focus, okay? Three means you have a very good command of the language. Personally, if you can do a very strong introduction paragraph in three sentences, it could actually be better for you than five. But three to four, three to five, four is the average Go for that. We're going to look at an example and you'll understand better what I'm talking about here. Okay, so here's our first example. The first example, I made it a little bit more basic. I got four different sentences answering each question individually, okay? Just to refresh our memories, what is the question? Is it better to live in the city or the country? Or is it better to live in the country or the city? Doesn't matter. So remember, I'm starting with a very general idea of the topic. Deciding where to live is one of life's more difficult choices. Where to live? Here is your topic. Very general. Have I given any information? No. Have I expressed an opinion? No. All I'm doing is introducing the topic. That's all I want the reader to know. We're talking about where to live. Next sentence. One may opt for life in the country or the city. Now, just in case you're not sure, opt for means choose. I used choice here, I used deciding here. I want to use as much different vocabulary as I can. Opt for, if you know it, use it. A little bit extra points for a nice language. Okay, one may opt for life in the country or the city. This is your question. Country, city, very clear. In my opinion, very, very direct and to the point. State your thesis, state what you believe. In my opinion, Life in the city is more advantageous. I choose city, it's better. That's all I wanna say, That's the, I'm answering the question. This is my stance, this is my opinion. This is due to the fact that the city offers better economic and social opportunities. So I'm going to present the reader with two reasons, economic and social. Am I giving any, any you any idea what the economic reasons are? No. Am I giving you any ideas what the social reasons are? No, they're very, very general. I've made it a bit more general, okay? So I've answered all four questions. I'm doing exactly what the essay is supposed to do, what the essay is asking me to do. Now, the only thing I would suggest about this one, again, very basic. The only thing I would recommend you could do, make this, take out the period, take out this. In my opinion, life in the city is more advantageous due to the fact that the city offers better economic and social opportunities. All I did was join the last two sentences. So now I have a three sentence paragraph and a little bit more complex sentence because I have more clauses and more phrases in it. So it shows a little bit of sentence variety. And it's very simple. All you have to do is just take out the beginning. If I want, I can just take out the whole thing. Due to the fact is a good expression. Use it. Remember it. And just put because. If you're stuck, if you don't know another expression to show reason, just use because. Preferably, you don't use because because a thousand other people taking the test with you are also using because. You want to be a little bit different. You want to stand out a little bit. But if you're panicking, if you're stuck, use because. Now, again, I mentioned there's a slight differences between TOEFL and IELTS. The only difference is time and number of words. For IELTS, you have 40 minutes to write your essay. TOEFL, you have 30 minutes. That's 10 minutes is a huge difference, right? You have to write your, for IELTS, you have your, to write your paragraph up to, your first paragraph, sorry, up to eight minutes. More than eight minutes, maybe 10 with the planning, you're getting into a bit of trouble. TOEFL, you have maybe five, six minutes to do this, right? So you have to be a little bit quicker. You have to be better prepared. All that means is just practice, 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 write lots of essays. Another difference is the IELTS, you need a minimum 250 words, whereas TOEFL you need more words, okay? So write more. If you can add another sentence but not get off topic, put it in for the TOEFL. But I'm going to show you another example, a little bit more complex, a little bit fancier if you want to say it, and one that I could use for in choose one or a compare and contrast and choose, okay? Let's do that. Okay, so let's look at now at another example. I made this one a little bit more multi-purpose, depending on what kind of questions you're asked. If you're asked to compare and contrast, you can use this. If you're just asked to choose between two, you can still use this, okay? 
First thing you'll notice after we read it, only three sentences, but it's actually longer than the last example, okay? First sentence, as a person reaches adulthood, he needs to decide on where he would prefer to live. Again, topic, where to live. You can introduce another topic, adulthood, because you can incorporate that into your reasons, okay? I'm not saying much, I'm just, my topic is still where prefer to live, okay? Next, while there are advantages <clears throat> excuse me, to both living in the country and the city, so here I'm introducing the fact that I might be comparing, both have advantages, so I'm going to compare these. I believe that for economic reasons, I have your thesis and your main reason, life in the city is more beneficial. I've chosen one, here's my general reason. Now you think, okay, done, right? No. Because I'm, here's an example of where you can use one reason for your whole uh, essay. You don't have to have two reasons, we think. This is because the city offers more employment opportunities as well as a more affordable cost of living. So now you realize I actually do have two reasons under the umbrella of the one reason. Okay? So many people think, oh, I can't think of ideas. I don't know what to say about this. If you can have one idea, that's fine. Split it into two categories, right? Economic reasons, jobs, and cost of living. It's cheaper to live in the city because more people, more things come in, etc. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. One, I only have three sentences. This is a very, this sentence, the second one, is a very long, complex sentence. If you can write a sentence that has more than one clause, more than one phrase, you're going to get bonus points because it shows a very strong command of the language, okay? I'm doing three things here almost. I'm sharing that I'm going to talk about the advantages, I'm giving you my opinion, and I'm giving you my major reason, all in one sentence. And then I'm getting you a little bit more specific how I'm going to split this up. Now, another thing to keep in mind, two things to keep in mind. One, whatever, however way or whatever order you list your reasons, make sure that the body paragraphs follow suit. So I talked about employment opportunities first. My next paragraph, if I'm comparing, then the paragraph's about comparing. Then the next one is employment opportunities and cost of living. If I'm only making a choice, then my first body paragraph is about employment. My second body paragraph is about cost of living. Okay? But keep that in mind. If you're comparing and then choosing, first paragraph, make the comparisons. Second paragraph, first reason for your choice. Third paragraph, second reason for your choice. Or if you want, if you have enough reasons, you're going to need more than one, you can compare throughout the body. Each paragraph compares one point. The, the city offers more employment opportunities. In the countryside, there's a limited number of jobs because there's not that many people, there aren't that many people, etc. in the next one. Another thing I want to mention, some of you may be angry with me right now because I said he, okay? He is okay. She is okay. Please do not do this. Do not do he, she, he, she, him, her, him, her, himself, herself. It A, it doesn't count as extra words, and B, this gets really, really annoying for the reader. If you're a girl, say she. If you're a guy, say he. If you're a guy and you want to say she, say she. If you're a girl and you want to say he, say he but only choose one, don't worry about it. You're not going to lose points for this, okay? Now, again, I can't stress enough how important it is to practice writing and ideally get someone to check it for you and give you feedback, okay? But write your essays and go over. Make sure all your pronouns are okay, all your prepositions are okay, your subjects and your verbs agree. Try to have different vocabulary, different sentence structures, okay? And practice, practice, practice. When you start preparing for the IELTS and TOEFL, start with the essay. Learn to write first because that takes the longest time to improve and it's usually where people get their lowest score on the test, okay? Anyway, go to ingvid.com. There'll be a quiz there to give you a little bit more practice with this. And of course, go to my YouTube channel and subscribe there if you like and come back again real soon. Bye.